Hey guys, today I wanted to talk a little bit about women comparing themselves to other women, but specifically women comparing themselves to other women when it comes to ministry. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alana and my channel is all about marriage, homemaking, healthy living, and homeschooling. Please subscribe. So I think when we look around to all of our wonderful sisters in the Lord, we see their strengths, we see the ways that God has gifted them and blessed them, and that's wonderful. That should cause us to praise the Lord for blessing them with skills and abilities and talents that we may or may not also have. But it's bad when we start to compare ourselves or feel less than or feel like we're not good enough or feel like we're not doing something right because someone else is good at something that we may not be that good at. Instead, we should be okay with the fact that they're good at that, praise God for it, and see what our strengths are and be thankful for those things. Something that's really, really, really important in this particular area of comparison to remember is that when you look at a woman being really good at a certain ministry, you need to remember that she is probably, what you're probably seeing is a woman who is helping her husband and following her husband very well in his ministry. The Lord has probably given him a wife that is excellent at the ministry that he has called him to. And so what you see is her following, helping, coming alongside her husband to fulfill the ministry, the task that God has called him to do. I have so many examples in my life where this is so apparent. I have a friend who is married to a man that is super sociable. He is always bringing people over his house, gathering groups of people together, particularly young singles, college students. He is just gifted. It is his ministry to do this, and he does it so well. They have game nights, they have worship nights, they have bonfires, bowling and whatever. They have people at their house on any given night of the week, hosting them for dinner. You name it, he just makes things happen, and it's always with the college students. Why? God's just called him to that. God's just gifted him in that. He was probably doing that before he was married. And then God brought his wonderful wife, my friend, to help him in that ministry. And she is exceptional at it. Really, really what we're watching is a woman help her husband fulfill the ministry that God has called him to. And together, they live that ministry out so beautifully. Then I have friends that host people all the time, ginormous get-togethers. I mean, I'm like, good for you. I'm glad you like doing that. <laughs> I don't. I mean, to the point where like they go the extra mile, there's like scripture hidden under your doily. You know, like everything, every little special touch, encouragement, intentional conversation, beautiful atmosphere, everyone's cup is full at all times. It is just so neat to see. What's happening? The husband is passionate about that. God gave him a wife who would do it well with him and he invites people over. Or he'll say, honey, invite these people over and pick a night and tell me when and I'll help. And I mean, that's, what it's, that's what's happening. The husband is called to this and the wife is coming alongside him, helping him and following him well. Those are more glamorous examples. My example's not that glamorous. My example is my husband's been in the music ministry for about 11 years now. So what does that mean for me? Being completely supportive that we will never have Sunday morning breakfast together, being completely supportive and have a good attitude that my Sunday mornings have been me getting up, getting myself and the kids ready by myself for the last 11 years and getting to church on time. And that's pretty much it. Now, yeah, that's been hard sometimes, especially when my kids were really small, it was hard. Then realizing, Lord, you have obviously called him to this, what do I need to do? Help make it possible, come alongside him, and support him through it. That's not as glamorous as hosting huge parties and having really profound relationships with all the college students at the church, but it's what the Lord called us to. Then little things, when people call him, he's really good with plumbing, for help with their dishwasher on a Friday night at five o'clock where we expect to be together as a family, and he says yes, okay? What's my role there? To support him, help him, and not complain and throw a little selfish hissy fit 
bless him in his ministry, support him in his ministry by having a good attitude about it and saying, go, go help our friend, you know? So this video is meant to encourage you, number one, to not compare yourself to other women. Number two, to ask yourself, what is my husband called to? What ministry, what task has the Lord called him to? That may be changing throughout the course of your marriage. That may be constant. That may be one constant and then little things that pop up here and there. And this applies to just other areas of life too. It's not just ministry. It could just be work. You know, if your husband has a conference call, help him by keeping the kids away. You are supporting him. You are helping him. You are coming alongside him to help him accomplish the task that he is called to. So find those things in your life so that you can be a good helpmate to your husband and so that he can feel your backing, your support, you being with him. Don't compare yourself. Find the ways you can help your husband at the task or ministry he's been called to by the Lord. And the third thing I want to say is that does not mean that we <laughs> can't do stuff for ourselves. It's not like only what the husband has going on matters. Of course, what we have going on matters too. But you may not like this, but I just want to say I agree with this. Even though what we have going on does matter, I think that the most biblical approach to that is that what they have going on matters more. So I'll give you a personal example in my life. I was actively pursuing the Juice Plus business and I still have a Juice Plus business and I still have income from it and I still work it from time to time, but I was aggressively actively pursuing that and I loved it. It was great. I traveled with the company. I had events. I made plenty of videos you guys saw. I made good money. I'm still making good money from all the work I did on the front end, but my husband has a business. My husband is starting and growing and has great dreams and goals for his coffee business. And it is growing fast and it is very exciting. So I'm now put in this position where it's like, keep pursuing my own thing aggressively and you do your own thing. Or say, you know what? I am called to be a helpmate. I am called to my husband to help him with his tasks and his callings and his ministries and his everything. So I decided I'm going to back off significantly back off from my juice plus business and come alongside my husband and help him with his task, what he is doing. I feel like that is biblical. That is what the Lord would want. Would I be sinning if I continue to pursue this aggressively? Not at all. I would not be sinning but I think it shows such a more biblical picture to the world, such a more encouragement and support to my husband, to my children, that I would leave whatever my thing is to come alongside my husband and be with him and work with him and grow this together. And so that's just one example in my personal life. There's two things I've heard that I agree with that I know would ruffle a lot of women's feathers. They might not like it at all, but I agree with it. Douglas Wilson, the author of Reforming Marriage, says, God calls a man to a task and he calls a woman to a man. And I just agree with that. And I also agree with in The Excellent Wife, Martha Peace says that we need to look at our husband's goals as more important than our goals. And I agree with that. We are called to be our husband's helpmates, our husband's helpers. That does not mean that we cannot pursue anything for ourselves. That does not mean that we cannot have goals or things that we want to accomplish in life. But I do think it means that what our primary goal should be is to help him and do whatever it is that God has set for him to accomplish with him and help him in any and every way that you can. And I know that a lot of women won't like to hear that, but I just have to say that that is what I feel is most biblical and the healthiest thing for our marriages. So I hope this video encourages you to not compare yourself to other women and their ministries, but instead to look at your husband, see how God has called him and see how you can come alongside him to help him with his ministry and his tasks. I hope this video helps you to look for those things and look for those opportunities, even if they're not ministry related, if they're just life 
things, his work, his goals, how can you help? And that you would evaluate your life and see is there something that I'm pursuing aggressively and actively that I could probably give up so that I can come together with my husband instead of be doing my own thing and his own thing. I know that it might be a huge sacrifice, but it will honor the Lord. And I would love to hear your thoughts and comments and ideas in the comments below. So please comment. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe and have a great day.